what's scarier? Kanye West becoming president or ransomware attack? I think the latter. But how do you even deal with a ransomware attack? Are you even ready for a ransomware attack? Or well, fear not, because your boy will show you how using Azure Sentinel, which will alert you on when your file is being encrypted within your environment. So grab your coffee or your whiskey, because it's going to get so juicy. Yeah. OK, so we're just going to dive straight in. Um, here I'm logged into my demonstration Azure Virtual Machine. Um, this is also a domain controller which I use for simulations and attacks, etc. So now I'm logged into my uh, DC. I have a simple file share. This is just under Wii, uh, Wii. This is just under C file share. That's a few files in it. Um, Sentinel workshop file here. Let me just open this. Um, oh yes, I'm using LibreOffice. I have no affiliations or, or sponsorships here. Um, it's just purely for uh, pure demonstration. Uh, don't show tips. Okay, so this is just a Sentinel document. Uh, let's open this. This is a PDF file. Okay, and we've got Visio PNG here. Okay, uh, serverless cookbook here. Okay, so we've got some files in here. So what I've done is. I've created a piece of malware, so what this malware will do, it will go ahead and encrypt all the files within that file share, specifically, um, using the encryption method CMS, which is cryptographic message syntax. Now, I specifically targeted the, the, the C drive uh, file shares um, only because, obviously, this is a demo, um, and I just want to show you the, uh, you know, the, the power of, uh, of ransomware attacks. So I'm just going to go ahead and run this. So that's now run. Firstly, terrifying. Uh, no one obviously wants to see this sort of message to, uh, when you've you know you've logged into a server. Uh, so now let me go over to my file share. So I'm in my file share now. Um, as you can see, everything has been uh, re uh, has been encrypted. So the actual file extension has changed with a dot encrypted at the end. So this was obviously a Word document. So if I go open with, let's try the Office again. No affiliations. Um, let me try opening this. Okay, gibberish. So let's see if I can rename this and remove the dot encrypted off the end. Change it back to a docx. Let's try opening this again. Still encrypted. Okay. So the same with the PDF files. Oh, it's, it's not going to open with the with the office anyway, is it? What am I doing? Um, rename this. Can't open Adobe Reader, okay, because it's corrupt or decoded, etc. So you kind of get the gist of what's going on here. These files are 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 completely encrypted. Um, so so this this kind of sucks right now. God damn right. So how do you detect uh, when this type of attack is, is happening? Um, well, you can't, and that's the end of the video, so, uh, so good luck. Alrighty then. So <laughs> um, if you haven't got the right tooling, processes, or procedures from a security standpoint, it kind of leaves you wide open. So harnessing the power of uh, Azure Sentinel, which is a cloud-based seam, um, you've really got the capability to identify these type of attacks before they you know, start to do a lot of harm. So firstly, if you're planning on capturing uh, file level auditing, you're going to need to enable uh, a group policy within your domain. If you haven't got this enabled already, I'll show you this now. So we're going to go to group policy. I did mine in my default domain policy. Obviously, this will be slightly different in your organization. It's under computer policies. It's under Windows settings. Let me just pull this out, that's difficult to get. Security settings, and then we're going to go down to advanced audit policy configurations, and then audit policies at the bottom. Jesus, so yeah, it's a long tree here. Um, and then the last one, finally there, is object access. 
Now here I've got file, uh, audit file system for success and failure enabled. Um, this is to capture all logs. Obviously you might not want failures, you might want failures. It depends. Again, all down to your requirements. Um, it's worth noting that this will generate uh, a large amount of security logs within Event Viewer. So um, just be careful and think about the type of auditing, uh, the level of auditing that you want. If you've got extra disk space on servers which you would like this to be enabled on, um, it may be worth chucking a, a, an extra few gig uh, just for a logs drive if you haven't already. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is I'm just going to close this and then we're going to go into security events in Event Viewer. Okay, let's go to here. So we just encrypted those logs, and what we're doing is we're looking for 4663. Yeah, so 4663 is uh, an attempt uh, was made to access an object. Um, so you can see all the logs that are here, um, and I wonder if we're going to see one. So you have uh, Adobe Reader, obviously, was trying to access a file. Uh, you've got the Explorer, which is basically just opening the files. Uh, again, these ones still trying to access. Okay, so we've already enabled this, and the logs are absolutely piling in. So it, it's a lot to take uh, in with all these logs. So how do you actually filter between those logs? Well, what we're going to do is we'll flick over to the Azure portal, um, and we'll now that these logs are starting to be collected, we'll actually start doing some uh, data analysis uh, and detections around around capturing uh, that, that type of attack. Okay, now we're in the Azure portal. Um, I'm actually in the Sentinel dashboard here. So I'm going to go over to my log section here. This is where I do all my, um, my baseline hunting. So let me just collapse this and query this needs to be set for 30 minutes okay so what we're looking for here is obviously a security event uh intellisense it's crapped its pants again here we go yeah security event and then we're going to go where and then event id that's data um equals equals 4663 let me just run this um we're going to get pretty much the same view as what was in um event viewer there Maybe just format it slightly different. Um, so there's a lot of crap um, here from 4663. So there's 1,253 events just in the last 30 minutes alone. Um, so, you know, we're going to need to use Sentinel's KQL to filter the noise, only get alerted on potential threats um, using the KQL uh, data filtration syntax. So... Okay, I'm going to do a first thing. If, if you've done this on multiple computers, um, what we can actually do is if we go to filter on the left here, um, if you're not that familiar with KQL uh, and, you, and you're not very comfortable with, with writing the syntax, you can actually use filter to grab some of the information for you. Um, so I'm just going to grab the computer and then I know it was this user, so I'm just going to apply and run. So that's just going to chuck them straight in. Again, we've still got 1,253 uh, items. This is because I'm only doing this on one uh, one computer, one virtual machine, so they say. Okay, so now we're going to start filtering out all the common processes that file audit will see. So we'll start adding these into this query. Um, I also have quite a bit of software installed on that VM. So we're going to need to filter that out as well in our query. Your servers and infrastructure will be slightly different to this, as mine is a uh, is a demonstration. So here we're going to go where process name, and then it's going to go not con does not contains, and then explore whoops. exe, and then we're going to run this. Now we're getting somewhere. So now we only have two hundred and seventy seven results. Again, this is quite a large amount of results. So I need to add a few more process exclusions in here, which I don't want to see, which I know are common and they are non-threatening. So again, I'm going to go, it's not contains, and then I'm going to have notepad.exe. This might be quicker if I just paste, yeah. Um, here, 
I'm gonna close MS Paint as well. Don't want, whoops, don't want to see that. Um, and then Adobe Reader is that Acro. Oh, 32, I think. If not, don't worry about it. Um, and then Libra was open with Office, I believe. S office. So you can see what we're doing here. We're just filtering out all the results. Okay, so now we've got 53 items here. Now this is this is getting juicy. Um, so now I'm gonna just filter out PowerShell as well because I did use PowerShell. Whoa. PowerShell. Uh, PowerShell. Uh, yeah. Okay, all right, let's run this. So, 53 items. So, we're still getting quite a large of uh, amount of information here. So, we still need to do some more query analysis um, to make sure that we're pulling uh, the information that we need, which we can then build into a, uh, into a Sentinel alert. So, I'm going to add some more bits here. So, where object name and then ends with... Uh, and then we're going to go dot png okay i'm just going to copy this paste that and then i'm going to go pdf i'm going to copy and paste that i'm going to go dot x c uh yeah and then what i want to do is i want to extend the file name uh for, well, have i done it no oh, file name change equals and then object name so this is just renaming the object uh, name to the new file change. Uh, and then I want to sort this by. So sort by object name. Actually, it will be file name change. File name change. And then time generated. And then account type. Actual account. Uh, yeah. I'll do uh, the computer is run on the process name uh, and then object server okay now let's go ahead and run this uh, 13 items okay uh, encrypt, encrypt okay so it's actually still showing me the actual um, the file share without a file so let's let's get rid of this uh, ends with whoops can't spell. I should have really just uh, copied the above, right? Uh, let's go see. And then you've got to do two backslashes to pass it correctly. Let's run this. Juicy. Okay, so now we can see that we are only seeing um, encrypted files now. So files that are not running with the Explorer process, uh, not being open, not being opened by Notepad, MS Paint, Adobe Reader, um, LibreOffice, no affiliations or sponsorships, um, PowerShell, uh, etc. So here you can really start to build and architect your your query to you know in, include um, Excel, include any other files or formats. What you're looking for in hindsight is. Now we've filtered all these out, there should be no other program or process which should have a need to rename or change the file extension or alter these files in any way, shape or form. So this is this is where we want to be. Um, okay, so now we need to create our Sentinel query. So I'm just going to go ahead and come up here and go new alert rule and create Azure Sentinel alert rule. Okay, so for this name, I'm going to call this ransomware attack. Actually, let's do potential ransomware attack. Uh, the tactics. Uh, execution. Impact. Okay, uh, this is going to be a high severity one. Next, we'll go to the logic. Okay, so here I'm going to remove um, this computer and the user. 
and I'm gonna come down. I'm gonna add the entity for the account as an account. I'm gonna add that, and then the host is gonna be computer, and then IP is gonna be obviously IP address wherever it is. Here we go. Okay, so query scheduling. I want this to be uh, pretty frequent. So every five minutes and look up data from the past five minutes. Um, generate alert when the number of query is over. So I'm going to go 10. Um, so this is going to be my threshold for, for more than 10. Uh, and then I want to group all them into a single alert. I'm going to go next. I'm going to enable grouping as well five hours let me just put that to eight hours so for a day uh automation and response let me select send an sms validation passed okay and create okay so now that's created to conclude um was this simulation a real life ransomware attack well yes it was if you think about the crypto wall attack, which is a common and dangerous piece of malware, wall ransomware even, this was able to encrypt 230 gigabytes of data in two hours, equating to 30 megabytes a second. For an example, uh, with an average file size of one megabyte, if I encrypt a folder with a fi thousand files for a total size of one gigabyte, using the ransomware which I created, it would take less than 34 seconds to encrypt one gigabytes of data. So this kind of gives you the real world simulation of a, of a ransomware attack. Um, additionally, ransomware programs are known to use AES 256 bit encryption to encrypt files. So my simulation was, was very similar to the speed of the ransomware attack. There is also a small detail to mention that the encrypted files uh, are created with the same file name but with the extension dot encrypted is added so you could still use the analytic query we did in this video uh, because we're excluding known processes again we're trying to capture unknown processes that are interacting with these files i.e don't alert me when someone opens a file with word or notepad so encrypting ransomware may have slightly different behaviors okay uh, that wraps us up now so thanks for watching the video if you like the video please give it a thumbs up if you don't well that's just fine please subscribe tell your friends tell your family tell your nan cheers